Hey there, and welcome to An American's Guide to Government with me, Professor Jen. I'm an attorney and a professor, and I'm an American who believes really strongly in our government's capacity to do good for our citizens and for the world. In this video series, I'm going to explain why. So consider me to be your guide to the U.S. government. We Americans are really fortunate to live in a country that's full of beauty, both natural and man-made. However, many of us don't have an opportunity to travel the country and to marvel at its many wonders. Fortunately, we also have a beautiful system of government, and that is something that every American should enjoy. It's not a perfect system, and it does not currently work for all Americans, but it can and it should. In this series of videos, I aim to explain the beauty of the American system of government and its potential to enhance the lives of all Americans. My goal is to help people understand how our government is intended to operate, regardless of which political party is in power. Our nation was founded intentionally, and much thought was given to its governmental structures, both what to include and what to leave out. The classes that I teach focus on the U.S. federal government, but so does my day job. As the university attorney who specializes in supporting federally funded research, for the past 20 years or so, I have focused on how the U.S. government, particularly the executive branch, is supposed to work. I have also had an extended, up-close and personal look at how it currently works, which is unfortunately not for the benefit of all or even most Americans. But if we commit to working together as citizens and residents, I know that we can make our government work for us, for all of us, because it is our government. We, the people, are its source of authority and it is answerable to us. The problem is that many of us were never actually taught all this government stuff, or we learned it briefly in seventh grade um, and have long since forgotten about it. And even if you happen to remember what you did learn in seventh grade, it's only a tiny fraction of the whole story. Unless we specifically seek it out in college or through reading on our own, no one really teaches us about all of the things our federal, state, tribal, and local governments do for us. And truly, our governments do a lot for us. Um, let's just take a look at the U.S. federal government. So obviously, it handles things like national defense, uh, as well as emergency response, such as to natural disasters or man-made disasters. It also handles national law enforcement through the Department of Justice and the FBI. But there's just so much more than that that impacts our daily lives. So the food that we eat, the medications that we take, um, those are safe for human consumption thanks to federal regulations, as well as inspections by federal agencies like the USDA and the FDA. The air that we breathe, the water that we drink, those are relatively clean and safe because of the Environmental Protection Agency. We've got cribs and car seats that we can entrust our babies to and know that they'll be kept safe and sound. The paint that we put on our walls and the gas that we put in our cars is now lead free thanks to federal regulations. And that has led to fewer birth defects and healthier children, adults, and communities across the nation. Um, in fact, things like our toasters and the ovens that we buy, they rarely catch fire anymore, so we don't have to worry that they're gonna burn down our house. Those benefits are thanks to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. We've also got our bank accounts that are FDIC insured. Uh, they are backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Every year, our weather reporting system gets better, and that actually saves thousands and thousands of lives thanks to developments at and funded by uh, the National Atmospheric and Oceanic Administration, or NOAA. We have the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, that protects our intellectual property, thus spurring further inventions and innovations that benefit the U.S. economy. And these are just some of the very many things that our federal government does for us in return for our tax dollars. Government investment in research, it kind of permeates every aspect of our daily lives, even though we don't necessarily think of it that way. Uh, it's kind of like the matrix. It's there, but we don't necessarily see it. Um, for instance, the Department of Energy provided funding for modern conveniences like digital data storage and fluorescent lights, communications and observation satellites, advanced batteries of the type that we now use in electric cars, supercomputers, and modern water purification techniques 
that make drinking water safe for millions of Americans. Thanks to NASA, we've got wireless headsets, camera phones, comfy sneakers, LED lights, baby formula, dust busters, and so many other inventions that we use in daily life that it's almost impossible to count them. NASA, the Department of Energy, and other federal agencies continue to invest not only in their own research and development, but that of private industry. In fact, the CEO of the largest private user of the International Space Station recently said that it's thanks to government funding that finally private industry is starting to emerge around the space station, um, as well as the means to get there. And that wouldn't have happened without government support because the commercial marketplace, you know, just wasn't there in the beginning. Indeed, many private enterprises wouldn't exist without the federal government, from the railroads in the mid 1800s to commercial spaceflight and genetic sequencing and electric car companies like Tesla now. In areas where there isn't yet a marketplace or the private sector doesn't have sufficient interest to fund the research, our federal government takes care of paying for that fundamental research and that paves the way for both scientific advancements and the commercial markets that benefit all of us. The US government does so much to improve the lives of American citizens and companies, but most of us never hear about these benefits. Um, we only hear about the government when there's a problem. And as Americans, we deserve to understand what our government is doing and how it benefits our country and us as individuals. For those of us lucky enough to have been born here in the United States, it's pretty easy to take our government for granted because we've never had to live without a functional government. We've never had to live through a societal collapse. People who have lived without government or lived under an oppressive government are more likely to find meaning in democratic government. People who have never experienced a collapsed state, like many of us, we're a bit slower to appreciate the fact that we've got a state that has not yet collapsed. But we can learn from the experience of others. I'm a natural born American citizen, but my father and my grandparents fled an authoritarian, communist, anti-Semitic state, and it was America that took them in and protected them. So my family instilled in me from a young age a really deep appreciation for the American way of life, our rule of law, and our system of government. To me, the US government might be the single most important and interesting institution in modern history. And we should not take it for granted. You know, we should understand it, we should celebrate it, and we should make the most of our government. We should use its structures well uh, for the benefit of all Americans, for our entire nation. And in this series of videos, I hope to remind you, or perhaps explain for the first time, how our nation's founders intended our government to operate, um, how they intended it to be organized. So in these videos, I am gonna do my best to provide you with an updated and hopefully interesting version of what you may have learned in your seventh grade civics class. I intend for this series to cover the basics of government, uh, primarily US federal government, but we're also gonna talk about the states. But for the feds, we're gonna talk about how that government was organized, uh, the principles of American government, such as rule of law and respect for individual rights and our duties as citizens, and the powers and duties of the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. We'll take a closer look at the Constitution and its first 10 amendments, uh, which make up the Bill of Rights. These are the basic rights owed to all of us by our government. You know, we the people give the government its authority to govern, and in return, the government guarantees that it will respect and protect our civil rights and liberties. We're gonna examine executive branch agencies uh, because they handle most of the government's work on a daily basis. Um, that action, it impacts us daily. So it's important for us to understand what these agencies do and the boundaries of their authority. I'm gonna provide an overview of the law, what it is, how it's made, and how to understand it. In a society where we get most of our news as headlines and sound bites, it's really important for each of us to be able to critically evaluate the information and the opinions that are getting thrown at us. We'll talk about emergency response, um, you know, how we protect against and mitigate disasters. Because the government works for us, we're also gonna talk about ethics and integrity in government, uh, the various ways that we can participate in our government and hold it accountable to us. 
As American citizens, we should have a say in our government's policies and decisions. And to do that effectively, we need to understand how our government works. The ultimate goal of this series is to unite us as Americans by appreciating the beauty of our system of government and its potential for good, its potential to enhance the lives of all Americans. I love my country, and I hope through these videos to restore at least some of our collective faith in American government by examining our core principles and recognizing what a special system we Americans have created. Like I said earlier, our government was founded intentionally. There's a lot of thought given to its structures. It is a system that is supposed to work the same way regardless of what party is in power, and it's supposed to work for all of the people regardless of our differences, because it is we the people that are the government's source of power and authority. I hope that recognizing and appreciating the beauty of our system, um, of our government, our laws, that it can unite us through a shared sense of patriotism. I'm not talking about nationalism, but real patriotism, which is a shared sense of civic duty and the ability to pull together as one country and do great things. Because when we pull together as Americans, we do great things. We invented the internet. We landed on the moon. We generally kick ass in international sports competitions. Uh, we're currently driving a robot around another planet, taking really amazing pictures. We've saved our children and the country from polio. All of these things we have done by pulling together as Americans to support each other and to support our country. And one of the most patriotic things that we as individuals can do right now at this moment in time is to understand how our government is intended to operate. It's intended to operate for the good of all Americans, and we should utilize that knowledge in the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness for all of us. I hope this video series will inspire Americans to strive for our country to be that shining city on a hill, um, that Camelot, a beacon of liberty for the world because we're united here at home by our love of country and our commitment to equality and justice for each other as Americans. Our government touches all of our lives every day, even though we don't often realize it. So let's make our government work as it's intended to work, a government by the people, for the people. Our nation's founders and our institutions have given us a blueprint for that system of government. This series aims to describe that blueprint and how we can use it for the public good nearly 250 years later. So let's get started. But first, as I've said, my intent is to provide you with a reasonable overview of our system of government and its accompanying history. But you shouldn't just take my word for it. Here's a list of resources that you can use to fact check me and to learn more about the topics that are gonna be covered in this video series. If you're interested in a more in-depth look at the executive branch operations, environmental law, emergency management law, things like that, please go ahead and check out my full lectures, uh, which are available on the American's Guide to Government channel. So next time, we're gonna take a look at the very basics of the US federal government, how it was created and how it's organized. That means we'll take a look at each of the three branches of government the legislative branch, which is made up of two houses of Congress, the executive branch, which is the president, plus all of those acronym heavy federal agencies, and finally the judicial branch, which is our federal court system. Thanks for listening. Please watch this space for new content. And that's all folks.